Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G and we're going to do part two in the Evolve 3 laptop series. What we're going to do in this video here is check out what's going on on Windows, get rid of Windows, and install Zubuntu, X-U-B-U-N-T-U. You pronounce that your way, I'll pronounce it mine. See what that leaves us with. So we're going to do a little bit of a backup in there. So there will also be some instructions in the description down below on how to do a uh, real down and dirty backup in Linux. And let's get right to it all right let's turn it on for the first time if i can get the lid open again you know what it's the magnets the magnets that hold this lid shut are strong i like it the power button is a key on the keyboard weird it's trying it's not outputting any hdmi all right touchpad's not bad there's no <laughs> There's no dedicated right mouse button, so we'll figure that out. United States, U.S. keyboard. Want to add a second keyboard. Skip, connect. Of course, I accept the license agreement. I don't really have much choice other than to turn it off again, which will be happening. This will not be keeping Windows. Personal use, offline account. I'll take the limited experience. <laughs> or even better, use an online account. Man, they are trying hard. Security question one of three. First pet's name, Kermit the Frog. It's not actually true, but you know how security questions are, especially when I'm sharing them with everybody on YouTube. What was your childhood nickname? Captain Awesome. You guys can call me that anytime you want. What's the name of the city where you were born? I've already told you all this, so it's not a secret. Online speech recognition, find my device, no. No. Oh, scrolling's backwards. Inking and typing? No. Advertising? No. Tailored experiences? No. Diagnostic data? No. It's my computer. Location? No. All right, now all that stuff's off. Let's accept that. Watch it turn it all back on anyway. Just a moment. Let's customize your experience. Let's skip that. Let Cortana provide personalized experiences. Nope. I have enough women in my life. Hi. Hi. We're getting everything ready for you. This might take several minutes. We'll come back when it's done. All this and still no HDMI output. Okay, so the screen tops out at 1366 by 768. So it's close to uh, 1280 by 720. It's a little tiny bit bigger. Oh, hey, there we go. I needed to get a different HDMI adapter than the one that I've used before. All right, so we are set up with screen capture. Let's see what this thing says for features on the inside of it. Okay, so as you'd expect, if you tap on the right side of the panel, it's a right click. If you tap on the left side of the panel, it is a left click. Intel Celeron N3450 at 1.1 gigahertz. 3.83 gig of RAM, so it's probably 4 gig with some of that being shared by the video card. Evolve 3 Holdings Party Limited Support. Support hours, 6 hours. All 6 of them. Okay. Windows 10 Pro Education, so there's going to be some limitations there. Uh, 56 gig hard disk, which is probably 64 gig with some extra partitioning type stuff. Processors. 4 cores. Yep, 4 cores. Four logical processors, one socket, 1.1 gigahertz. So not a screamer. All right, I've done what I want to do in Windows. Let me get this thing backed up and then we will be right back for some more shenanigans. All right, so I pressed escape. It went right into setup, which is nice. Memory speed, 1.6 gigahertz. Total memory, 4096 like I thought. Trusted computing, smart, serial, CPU. Boot override, nice. I can tell it to boot specifically off of this one next time it boots up. That's very helpful. Nice. Or this time when it's booting up because I interrupted the boot cycle. So that was pretty cool. Well, that's interesting. It's already dual display. Yeah, it's already set up for dual display right off of the Ubuntu boot. Cool. And I want to try 
Mostly because I don't want to install. I want to use this like as a live operating system. Let's get this thing not extended, but mirrored on this display. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Yes. I want to keep this configuration. <laughs> 1024 by 768. Yes, I want to keep this slightly bigger. What a weird resolution. All right, so we've got the display mirrored now. Let's get very weird. There's more of the display on the laptop screen than there is in the screen capture. Oh, okay. I have, I've not tried to mirror displays for like 10 years or so. So I didn't know on Ubuntu, you can have mirrored displays where the displays have two different resolutions and you just see what is possible to be seen on the different screens. So it was mirroring, but the internal... The screen capture that you see over here was set at 1024 by 768 and the laptop screen was set at 1366 by 768. So that's why I couldn't see all the buttons. Close that. Do we have Wi-Fi? We don't have Wi-Fi. Do we have, this didn't work for me earlier on a different, different machine. So I have no reason to believe that it will work any better on this machine, but we'll try it. Searching for available drivers, no additional drivers available. So no network card drivers. We will have to compile these network card drivers ourselves. We'll get there. Okay, so we're gonna list the block devices. This is gonna tell me what all the storage is that is attached to my machine. I have the USB thumb drive that I booted off of. I have the two terabyte external spinning rust drive that I'm going to back up this data to. And then I have the internal drive. Looking at this, the internal drive is MMC BLK0. So MMC is a type of storage that is, if it truly is MMC, <clears throat> if it truly is MMC, then it's going to be uh, SD type of storage. And therefore it's gonna be a flash type. And therefore it's going to be a limited number of write cycles before this thing goes bad. So consider this machine with the knowledge that I have 15 seconds into booting it up to have a limited lifespan because the internal storage will expire. Probably won't expire in your lifetime of this machine, but it will expire. Not a deal breaker because you can boot it off of external drive so you can keep on going if you so desire to keep on going with an old slow machine like this four years from now. But enough yammer and let's get this thing backed up. So I'm gonna do dd if equals slash dev slash mmc blk zero, which is the device. Uh, if dd is disk duplicate if is input file, everything in Linux is a file type and dev MMC BLK0 is where it happens to be located with a block size BS of 64K, arbitrary large number. You could do 1K if you wanted, it would just chunk it up a little bit, smaller chunks, bigger chunks, it should transfer faster. I'm going to pipe the output of that DD command to gzip so it gets compressed, dash C, telling it to grab the data from the command line instead of looking inside of a file or, or something along those lines. And I'm going to redirect the output to slash mount slash ed slash evolve.img.gz. So evolve is the name of the computer. So that's the name of the file. I'm going to call my backup of it, img for image and gz for gzipped image. The internal storage is 57.6 gigs. It's a 64 gig card. And this is going to back up all of the partitions on it and put it into one big container and then compress it. So my hope is that it's going to take about 20 gigs worth of storage space. We will see when it's done. And Linux is very uh, user friendly. If there's nothing to complain about, it doesn't complain. Very stoic, stalwart even. So we'll be back when this is done. Install. All right, let's pick a language. English. Whoa, nope. My fingers danced upon the touchpad. English, continue. English, English, continue. Super speedy. Install third party drivers along the way. If it'll actually check. I'm going to do a minimal installation because I don't really do anything with these laptops besides ham radio and all that stuff is not part of the install. So let's leave it out. Continue. And then I'll also make it faster. Installation type. Bye bye Windows is the installation type. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. 
actually, I want to see what the partitions are right away before we do the install. It took a little bit. <laughs> I was being impatient. 800 meg NTFS free space. It's not going on SDA. That's the flash drive with the ISO mounted. And I wonder if that 800 meg partition is the recovery partition. I'm not going to recover it that way. I made a backup. So I'm going to go back. It shouldn't be this hard to go back. Erase. We'll look at advanced features. Is there anything in there we can speed? Erase disk and use ZFS. I don't need encryption. Not for this job. Install. Let's see what happens. All right, my time zone. Y'all know I'm in Northwest Wisconsin. Let me tap the Northwest Wisconsin thing and it picks Winnipeg. Too high. I guess that's true. That wasn't the Great Lakes. That's nowhere near Chicago, but that's the closest time zone. My name, Steve, KM9G. Pick a username. Yep, that works. My weak password, which is kind of pointless because I'm going to log in automatically. You'll just need to guess it in order to sudo. We'll breeze right through this. Uh-oh. Ready to restart. All right, we're back up and running. Let me get the display sorted out. Okay, and it's acting like it's got networking. It's not showing the X. It's just showing the up and down. So let's see. Settings. Additional drivers. Probably still not there. No additional drivers. All right. Let's cut this video right here. Uh, we will pick this up in the next one where we go through how to compile and install the network card driver for Linux. But right now we've got a working machine. We 86 Windows on an 86 architecture machine. And we're ready to roll on to greater and greener pastures. There's a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.